Hello and welcome to a very special developer video. Why is it special? Because we are playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition on the Nintendo Switch for the yes. very first time. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Pavel Buzha. I'm a community manager here at CD Projekt Red and I'm joined by Pavel Sasko. That's you are true. the senior quest designer on Wild Hunt and the lead quest designer on Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. So the two expansions for The Witcher 3. That How are you? That is correct. Uh, I'm uh, feeling well. I'm actually, I actually can't wait to show the players uh, what we've been uh, cooking yeah. uh, and how it looks on the, and how it plays actually yeah. uh, on the console. For those that might not know you, um, what was your involvement on The Witcher 3 and what are you doing right now? Ah, so on The Witcher 3, I was one of the three original quest designers that started mm -hmm. designing the whole Witcher 3 story. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the team grew up, there was like more and more people involved, but I was one of the three people that wrote majority of the main story and side quests. And then afterwards, I was one of the few people um, that were implementing uh, those quests. Mm -hmm. And on The Witcher 3, I did a lot of main quests uh, and I loved it. <laughs> so that, that was my involvement. My involvement. Um, yeah, and then uh, on the on the expansions, I became a lead. And yes, I have the huge pl privilege to to lead this amazing amazing team of quest designers and like build this this awesome expansions uh, expansions that we really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to finish up Geralt's story. Uh, and right now, I'm a lead quest designer on Cyberpunk. Exactly. Yep. So that's your story. Um, for those of you asking, the most important thing is the release date, of course. Um, so if you want to play the game on your Switch, you'll be able to do that on October 15th this year. So yeah, yep. I'm excited. I'm going to play it. I already played it through the weekend just to um, get ready so I don't die too many times. <laughs> just to get you so, triggered. So, 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 so. No, 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 not, not to get you triggered, of course. And for those asking, like, what will you get? So this is the complete edition. So you get both expansions. You get yes. uh, all the 16 uh, free DLCs. That's correct. So yes. the whole package. Um, and everything actually will be on the game cartridge if you buy the um, uh, physical version. But there also will be a digital version, which you can download from the Nintendo shop. So, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool package. Yeah. And a lot of gameplay. And a lot of gameplay. It's, lot uh, of I think it's over 150 hours if you count into the expansions, but yeah. I've seen people do 500, 1000 hours. I've seen yeah, some yeah. crazy stuff, especially that you can do <laughs> New Game Plus, so you can redo the game again. So yeah, it's it's very, very crazy. Um, for those of you asking about resolution, so um, in docked mode, so we have the console docked right now, it's in 720p, uh, but if you take it out of the dock, uh, like I am doing it right now, so you actually see it actually is on this console, it's 540p, so yeah. It's like a nice little... Let me put it back, and it works. Yeah. See? Yeah. Um, so we, what we want to show you today is we want to get into a little bit of gameplay. So mm, we will first yes. head to Novigrad, um, and after that we will visit to Son also. Yes. So Toussaint is, is the second expansion for The Witcher 3. That's correct. Um, Blood and Wine, so we'll be getting to that. And I think we should just um, slowly proceed to the gameplay. So I'll get my controller ready and we can jump into the game. So yes, we are just um, on our way to Novigrad. Um, can you set the scene for those who might not know The Witcher world? So yes. who's this guy? What's up with the horse? Where are we? So, if you are those who never heard of the Witcher, uh, Geralt is a mutated monster slayer. He is one of its kind. He is the Witcher. He belongs to the uh, clan of uh, Wolf. He is the one that was taught, you know, from his from his like youngest years to be a monster slayer. Mm -hmm. He has two swords, like silver one and a, and a, and a, um, and a steel one. Those are dedicated to killing uh, humans and to killing monsters, because monsters are vulnerable in this world to silver. Now, Geralt is trained in using those two swords, but he mm -hmm. is also a master alchemist. He yes. can create his own potions, he can create his own bombs, thanks to that. And he is also trained in using signs. So yes. Geralt can cast various types of signs from fire one that is an Igni to the protective one that is Irden. He can actually make 
uh, use of them in combat or in various various uh, scenarios and all that he was equipped with when he was during his training in Kermoran. Kermoran mm -hmm. is this oldest place in in the world in in our world of the Witcher where the Witchers were created and and Geralt is one of them. Mm -hmm. Now in the universe that the game is set in the Witchers are already almost extinct so there is already very few of them and mm -hmm. Geralt he is a living legend. Like he is a legend among them. Yes. He is the one that is recognized. He's the White Wolf, the Gwynblade. Um, uh, and he is, he has, he has those iconic traits, you know, that are recognized with the witchers, the white hair that is happening to the witchers when yeah. they are go going through the mutations. Mm -hmm. uh, he is also able to change his eyes and yes. uh, because of that he's able to see in darkness uh, and Geralt is also amazing in tracking so he is able to track the clues he is able to track uh, footprints marks of the blood he's able to feel and smell things yes. way better than the normal human the witcher senses exactly so so, he, so Geralt is sort of an investigator he's a mm -hmm. detective in this world he's solving crimes he's also tracking monsters he's saving people but also also sometimes killing people exactly depending on the choices that he has to make and uh, yeah and this is the beauty uh, of this world I like how you explained everything I think it sums up perfectly <laughs> what the game is um, and we are on our way to Novigrad and uh, before we get there we will actually um, stop here for some choices and consequences oh yes so there's some scene happening in the crossing in the front of us yeah there we go Another one. Run along home with the rest. Sir, show some mercy. We've not got nowhere to go. For us. I always wanted to have a hat like that. I mean, me too. Yeah. Sod off, <laughs> or I'll have you skewered. So yeah, we can choose uh, if we want to help these people to get to Novigrad. I mean, we can try to convince uh, the Redanian guard to let them through, or tell um, these people to go back but since we're nice and we want to help them oh, um, we're nice okay <laughs> we're I, I, when I when I play the Witcher 3 I'm always nice uh, but I've known people yeah. who play and they're like no you need to go back and so we'll yes. let them through yes and this is part of our choice and consequence yes. system in the game which is also extremely important how many times have I got to repeat this I've orders to turn back anyone who don't show a pass so here we have more choices. Uh, we can pay them off and get through. Um, we if, can also use one of the signs. Yes, right? if, if we had have... if we had delusion <laughs> on level two, we could exactly. actually you know convince him using a sign, and he would totally change his mind. Yes. Um, or we can be threatening a little bit and to like let him pass if you know what's good for you, like if you don't. Uh -huh. like it. But we're we're playing nice since You're I have the controller, nice. so okay. um, yeah. we're playing nice. As you mentioned. So we'll pay him off. King's a long way away, and your pay is probably meager. Sure we can't make a deal? Mean to say you're looking to, um... <clears throat> purchase a one-time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Easy. That's yes, that's, that's called a purchase a one-time pass. Yes. Yeah, I like how even the small conversations. Yeah. We've got nowhere to go back to. Novigrad. That's a chance of a new life. Stay off the roads. Liable to run into another patrol. Shan't be taken like that again. We'll be as careful as hares in a field bared by winter. But you. You was cast in a different mold than us. More like the hero that lies in the tomb near Crookback Hills. People like us already. Tombs in a cave in a hillside. Down Warren's at the foot of the hill. Folks say treasure inside's a sight to behold. Huge hoard. Might find something that suits you. Good luck. We also got an additional tip. Yeah. So we helped the refugees. I'll jump, jump back on Roach. Exactly. And uh, even though this is a Nintendo Switch, the Roach is still the same as he was. Yes. <laughs> so he can still perform the same actions as he did. Uh, yeah, and now we can like stroll around in this beautiful beautiful fields. Um, what I really like about the, the Switch version is also the fact that the foliage system, so you can see the beautiful mm -hmm. trees and so on, they have been updated, so they actually react to the wind. Yes. And the grass and, and the trees, it's all actually pretty much very, very close to how it was um, in the PC version or in the version of the, uh, of the uh, 
current gen, gen consoles. Mm -hmm. So now we are slowly approaching Novigrad, and this is I'm one of the. Fast. This is one of the. Sorry, I think I'm quite fast. <laughs> yeah, well, so Pavel is very fast approaching the Novigrad. <laughs> now I slow down. <laughs> this is this is one of the cities that we put an uh, insane amount of work into it because uh, uh, it was it was very very difficult to make it run well and work well on PC on consoles, uh, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of uh, R and D so so research and development put into it to make sure that it feels like a great like medieval city in the same time that it's dense that it feels natural that it feels true to its like historic roots mm -hmm. uh, and we've been iterating quite a lot to just make sure that the Novigrad pl plays well mm -hmm. and in this case you can already see Novigrad working on the switch and uh, it is. And it is actually a really cool feeling to run around the, the streets, especially when you're playing in a handheld version. Yeah. Uh, I had a pleasure, I had a pleasure to test it out. Yeah. Here we are in Novigrad. Um, for those that might not know anything about the city, what is Novigrad? I know it's a free city, it's very close yes. to Redania, but yes. uh, it's not ruled by anyone. If, if if I'm correct. Yes, that's correct. Historically, it has been compared a lot to Gdańsk in times when mm -hmm. it was a free city. Mm -hmm. So Novigrad has this, um, uh, I would say, position in the current world of The Witcher that it's a free city. It's a city where, and because of that, the city is developing very fast. Mm -hmm. it's, it's making a trade with various different kingdoms. And it's also a, a city that is becoming a blend of everything. Mm -hmm. And there are non-humans living in the city. There yeah. are believers of various religions. And there are also completely different um, layers of a, of a society. You see, you have people from beggars to, uh, to priests. You have people People, you have a, a really uh, wealthy um, uh, traders uh, who are living in the city, and right now we are in uh, uh, we are in in one of the more like richer places, and you can see those huge buildings and so on. Like this is the. The, the, the bigger and like richer part um, of the city. And Novigrad used to be, or it is called a, a capital of a city almost, uh, by the people who, who know the books, but also by the people who know games um, of The Witcher. That was a really important uh, place in the lore. Uh, and a lot of important characters from The Witcher actually come from Novigrad or visited it sometime. And right now we are approaching the, approaching the docks, right? With these beautiful ships uh, standing here, and uh, poor townsfolk. And boys playing around. <laughs> strolling, uh, strolling around. Yeah, what's really cool is there are also uh, very interesting gangs in uh, Novigrad which you get to kind of meet uh, without yes. going, of course, into detail not to spoil the story. But uh, like you said, we also have the eternal fire priests uh, which, which walk around from, from place to place. So mm -hmm. yeah, you will be able to explore. This is like the, one of the, the, the first big cities that you actually get into. So yes. Um, and, uh, and I remember very well. Yeah, and what you have just mentioned, I mean, the, the our knife, night and die cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the priests and pretty much every people, all the people that you look around, they actually go from one activity to another and mm -hmm. they have some purpose and their die and night cycle uh, is different depending <laughs> on what class they're from. Uh, so the priest is basically going pretty much from from uh, those small chapels around scattered around the place, going up till the hill where you can find the um, where you can find this main uh, church of eternal fire. Uh, while you know the, the poorer folk, they are pretty much walking from tavern to places exactly. to where they where they sleep to places to where they work, um, and you can you can you can see that uh, who they are is reflected like this. Huh. We met some charming people. We're a bit of coin short another round. We're butchers. You slaughter, we slaughter. Oops. They don't seem like the kind nice dudes. villagers pitching. over their purses. Ladies too light with their legs. Yeah. Girl is not happy. Villagers dealt with the wrong lords and ladies. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I have seen that so many times, yeah. and it's still, it's still cr funny. Me like when I, when I hear this so yeah, I uh, mean, what would you do in this case? Would you? Because I, I don't think I want to give them money. That seems nice. They, they do that seem nice, really. So what? Good. Let me pass. Yeah, let's let's try it. And let's see what happens. Believe me, <laughs> doing you a big favor by not giving you coin. Now let me through. Whoa. Whoa. Master, you best watch your words. 
We share a tray, but that don't mean you can treat us like dogs. Shut it. You'll bring misfortune on us. He's a witcher, can't you see? <laughs> We're still going with it. <laughs> well, you can be persistent in the path that you have picked. Yeah. <laughs> Out of my way. Out of my you way. Do it. <laughs> I will. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, sorry, I'm out. The guy's like, dude, you're out of your fuck mind. I'm going away. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, well. I can see that you've been grinding. No, no. <laughs> Point, master. Yeah, we see your point, master. I have the, I have the, I have the, I have the approach of just you know hit, hit, hit to get it yeah. done. Smash! We got experience points for that. Yeah, perfect. That's a lot of experience points. Yeah, twenty-five is always <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, well, that's uh, a, p a plenty. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, we shown you Novigrad. Like I said, we don't really want to spoil the story for those who never yeah. played The Witcher Three, and we will jump over to Toussaint. Um, and while I am jumping and loading the game, you can actually tell us a little bit about set the scene a little bit. Like oh, where, where about we're the going. Toussaint, right? Yes. Okay. So with the Toussaint, the thing is that um, when we've been working on The Witcher, like uh, the the whole game and then the first expansion, we always mm -hmm. felt that we wanted to show uh, players the world and the environment that is actually also a prettier part of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and Toussaint has been originally like described by uh, by by Master Sapkowski, but it was not it, like there was not a lot of action happening there. So we had a plenty of space to explore, you know, how we want to go with Tucson. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of work put, put into like making sure that the architecture and all the fashion feels right uh, for that places. Now, uh, our concept artists put great amount of work to make sure yeah. that the song feels great and so on and, and there was quite a lot of like iterations put into it and at the end we landed with like this French a, and a bit of Italian feel to the place and as a play when player lands there we can see that there's like the colors are very yeah. vibrant you know they're like very alive you know the same goes actually for characters so it already loaded oh god oh, okay uh, <laughs> the colors are really mm -hmm. are really like vibrant you can see that you know this place is way more alive and actually all the all the lands you've been seeing so far I mean I know that people are in love with Skellige and yeah. I think pretty much everybody loves Skellige yeah me too <laughs> but but still the Tucson like look at the look at the castle right in the background and all those fields the right mountains yeah and yeah exactly the, the olive trees you know in the front of you and the mountain um, I mean it, it the, the, the whole composition took us a lot of time and also just making sure that those like tiny things feel right yeah like you can see that even you know the the uh, um, uh, types of jobs that people have here, you know, when they are working, they're mm -hmm. doing things that are different, you know, that they're doing in... Uh... <laughs> he's, he's, he's cleaning the horse. Yeah, exactly. He's polishing his horse. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you can see, but you can see that, you know, that the, even the... Um, even the the uh, whole equipment and so you know like we put a lot of work into horse yeah. armor you know the famous horse armor uh, that, so that to just make sure that it you know it feels right you know and it fits nicely um, i remember how much trouble we had because of the because of the tails not fitting right you know yeah yeah, yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah yeah so we met up with milton here um and he is taking us to a place where there was a mysterious body found and exactly where we're yes. examined that and like you said he he's a knight of two songs so they are totally different they speak in a yeah. specific way well, yeah, yes. they act in a different way so like you said the whole setting is totally different you're more yeah. used to like everything being kind of gray and shady mm -hmm. while you're here like look at the sun mm -hmm. look at the colors everybody yeah. seems to be a lot more happier here but exactly like and, and he is he's like this chevalier type type of a guy yeah. and, and there is like numerous scenes that build it up and uh, as we will move forward uh, there is there is just uh, a lot of like small elements like as we land here maybe I should not spoil it but right. there are events that happen that set up the tone you know for the place we, we we see you know how the knights are for instance dealing with with monsters in this place Take it easy. Yeah, you can see how beautiful armor he has and so on. Everything we wanted to make sure that everything you know is in this nice atmosphere. Everything is cohesive. 
So yeah, in the beginning you mentioned the Witcher senses, well I'm actually using them right oh, now. Oh yes, exactly. So right now we are during the investigation and this is one of our core, I would say, go gameplay loops. Mm -hmm. So one of the core elements that players are doing in the Witcher is fighting, is uh, taking place in the scenes, so talking to NPCs, making choices, but those are also investigations. Yeah. So. Witcher has been compared very often to this kind of a noir type of a detective yeah. that is going after, you know, clues and checking them and commenting on them and then drawing conclusions and then, you know, figuring out yeah. maybe if he can, you know, understand what happened. And when we design our quests, we always also make sure that there's enough like that there's enough depth mm -hmm. in every investigation. So as you play, as a player, yep. you can mostly click like few clues. If you especially know how to do it, um, then you can go pretty fast through it. But if you're looking for a depth, there's actually plenty of it. And all the discussions and comments, you know, uh, they're always like showing the player that there's a bit more into it. And, exactly. and there's always a lot of thought that we put even mm -hmm. into, into the smallest clues. Yeah. So like you say, here he's gonna pretty much take the story and go from from like the ending so the dead body to how it happened where it came from so i really i really like like this part so we found uh, we found the tracks and now we should be following them so as you can see they're right here marked in red and you can already hear, like, see that there are some something's happening in the background, uh -huh. and, and you can see it on the minimap. This is actually yes. trouble. Careful. Yeah, exactly. So those are. This is a new type of opponent that we introduced in the in the second expansion. They are called scurvers, and uh, what happens with them, as you can see, they're like covered with those like sort of thorns or spikes, but they are a rotting flesh, yeah. and. Uh, if you, as a, as a player, if you cut enough veins, you will actually cause their their bodies to swallow mm, like, and like yeah. burst, burst in blood. And uh, this is an, an interesting, I would say, like a new mechanics that Ooh, we introduced boy. here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you can see that you know um, that Palmerin is. Uh, we he's, got him. He is not scared. Yeah, he's totally not scared. He's not uh, scared. If you want to replenish your your, your uh, strength, uh, since we're uh, a studio based in Poland, you can eat a dumpling, and oh, you're yes, eating a dumpling, obviously. and your health goes obviously, back. Obviously, yes, the it's, famous dumplings. Of course. Uh, I remember the times when they were introduced. So yeah, in now we have to use our Witcher senses to search the riverbank for signs of the guardsmen activities. So we are still. After that fight, Blood. going through the stuff Blood here. Pull these uh -huh. out of the water, then cut the mutilated body free. Okay. Yeah. Like designing the the investigation loops for The Witcher Gotta was die. really really fun because we always try to make sure that for the player there's always something like intriguing and you know and surprising and and this is what happens here right that, like after we investigated you know the nets it turns out that maybe you should go towards the water and uh, and as a player you can actually take this I investigation. To the uh, to different directions, uh, but here we just dive into the uh, to this river, and it turns out that there are like few important things, including like a handkerchief and piece of linen. Uh, so kerchief, monogram yeah. D L C, a noble's accessory. Clearly, need to comb the bank. So it seems it's a handkerchief with like a monogram on it. Yeah. So it seems to be pointing out to some kind of noble man, as as Geralt as Geralt just mentioned. Oh yeah, and you uncovered another one. More. Look, a boat was launched here. Guardsmen must have loaded the body parts onto it, taken them somewhere. Need to find out where. I'd like to look at the corpse before it starts to decompose. The inn. Its patrons must have seen the guardsmen. Which uh -huh. direction they took. We should ask there. Okay. So we are directed to go to the inn. To the inn together with Okay, there are some mysterious people looking at us. Mm -hmm. One thing. Found a handkerchief in the water. Monogrammed DLC. Mean anything to you? Delacroix? It uh -huh. can't be. Was it he the beast slew? Seems so. Knew him well? Long past. We were close friends once, but our paths diverged. He was a man of extremes. Standing by his companions, no matter the odds. Fighting his foes to the bitter end. Foes? You have a lot of them? He did. But I do not see what that has to do with the beast. Ah, Geralt. You've struck a raw nerve. Memories of a time long past, to which I'd rather not return now. Okay. I understand. Okay. We'll talk later. 
So maybe let's, go let's not go back to these memories. So as you see, like even even the handkerchief had a monogram. So the, all the elements like that we're using stylistically in our designs, we always try to make sure that they fit. You know that they fit the atmosphere, that they fit the place, and this is very important for us as, a, as a designers, mm -hmm. as a quest designers, that when we are building those um, investigations, let's say, but pretty much every element also in the cyberpunk is like, when we are building elements like that, we always use the elements, you know, in our puzzles that make, that they make sense in the context, you know, that yeah, they fit nicely. The but they also build this atmosphere, you know, that, that you can feel, yeah, okay, I'm in Tucson, right? Only in Tucson, the guy who was like slaughtered could drop the handkerchief with a monogram, you yeah. know, that... Yeah, that's flavor to the whole story. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Even, even those small elements, and those are things that are very often like omitted by designers, or like things that, that people don't really think of mm -hmm. that, um, that often, but they build this whole atmosphere and, and they make player immersed, right? Right. Okay, let's go with Milton. A lot of chatter around. Oh yes, uh, it's a very talkative people yeah. of, uh, of Bucle. Thank God Milton can run in his armor. Yeah, he's like <laughs> jogging. <laughs> exactly. So we made it to the end. Okay. By truth, could that be the musty scent of fresh <laughs> He's like this style yeah. always cracks me. <laughs> I see time has not dulled your senses. We would be honored if you would join us. Uh, your companion as well. But why do I not detect even a whiff of crayfish <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the most important the thing to mention. Thing like, There's a murder here, clearly but no. missing. <laughs> What's going on? Crayfish chowder. That's what we're for. All I caught was a corpse. I awoke at the crack of dawn, as I do each day. But when I looked up, I beheld a blood. Right. Yeah, and as you can see, like all those elements that we're visiting here, like we're showing more and more characters, you know, over those awesome armors, you know, in the in the inn, but they talk in a specific yeah. way. Like as a player, you could have been in the inns multiple times during which one, during which three and and first expansion, but here when you get we get you to the inn first time, we make sure that this there is this very clear like thick atmosphere exactly. there, so we can understand those characters better. With whom? <laughs> and it's actually funny, but we, 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 uh, when we've been working on the second expansion, we, we figured out that our writers, but also our quest designers, we wrote way longer lines. Basically, like all the dialogue is way longer because somehow mm -hmm. we felt that, you know, for this kind of speech, we just need to give it like a bit more flavor, a bit of color, you know? So because of that, they like speak in those really long lines, but, mm -hmm. they, <laughs> but they have a lot, of, uh, a lot of character in it, which I, which I personally love. Out the window! And beheld a sky red as blood. Ask Garrett, please, or we shall be here till winter. That the guy who was talking about food, but now he wants to get straight to the points. He wants yeah. to know what happened. So the victim's body, where they take it? Okay. Need to examine the body. Know where they took it? They ferried it across, then loaded it on a cart and hauled it to a cellar at Corfo Bianco to keep it cool. That guy's happy. What? We have someone listening in. Yeah, that's a. That's a hint that something's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Gerald can already sense it. And the controller is vibrating, so we know something's happening. Okay, yeah. Controller is rumbling. Woman who just left. Didn't see her before. Didn't notice her walk in either. Doubtless Linnis, the innkeeper's daughter. But hold, Gerald, because this is an outrage. Rossell's vineyard was auctioned off. Inconceivable. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. It finally came time to collect. His creditors auctioned off his property. So, this scene, this scene has a very special purpose to it because it's like building up, like setting up a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, pawns on the mm -hmm. on the chessboard. You know, like things that we'll be using in the store later. And uh, one of the things that is mentioned is, is the Rosso, but also uh, what we mentioned here is Corvo Bianco, right? Mm -hmm. has, has a special, very special role in the uh, in the in the second uh, in our second expansion. Yeah. Uh, maybe I won't spoil it, but no it's, spoiling here. <laughs> but it's uh, but it's very tightly connected with what happens to Geralt and... Um, Thanks for the hospitality. Time I examined the corpse. Corvo Bianco lies a short way from here, near okay. the thorny grounds. Just follow the road and you'll arrive. Not coming with? Oh yeah, duty of some sort calls. <laughs> <laughs> Her grace bestowed a great honor on me. Even before we departed for Velen. 
I'm to play the hare during this year's game in the Palace Gardens. Born and stuff. If you see me in my costume, you will wet yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. So as we can see, like yeah. they have no their help own here. <laughs> story. Yes, no helping, but also they have all their own way of having fun. Yeah. yeah. So, see you later. And being dressed as a hare is as important as tracking the murderer. So, exactly. Besides, they have a specialist to take care of it, which is Geralt. Hey, yeah, Roach time, to, time to call Roach. He is Moving. very useful as always. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lady. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, you can of course fast travel in the game, but um, I really like doing yeah. most of the stuff horseback. I don't know yeah, exactly. why. Maybe because it's just much more fun. Most of the time when I play, I just I just do this, like just just ride around. Yeah. Same goes for Cyberpunk. Actually, I just also drive around because that <laughs> just it, it's just yeah, it's like fun. being immersed in the world, right? Like just. Oh, oh and we hear by. there's something going on, oh, and the horse, a horse like running escaped, away. Right? There's like a barrel going through here. There's someone who is not looking too well. Ooh. Yeah. And there's a lot oh. of dead guards. God, he's like, seem to be dead. And the music changes here. And I love when the music changes right Yeah, here. you can see that something's going on. In the cellar, gotta be. So we know that the bodies are coming from the cellar. Exactly. And. Uh, a quest designer who took care of that part, uh, Boaje Augustinek mm -hmm. from our cracker team. Uh, Bo Boaje made sure that all the all the clues that, that we have passed, you could also have checked there to yeah. find out something more. Uh, so it's it's for us a way to give player depth and, mm -hmm. and possibility to find out more. Um, also. Great force. Uh, also, you know, like all the clues that you saw, like they were all very dynamic and we wanted to make sure that player understands that something happened just a moment ago, mm -hmm. right? Just as we were arriving. So, and we understand that also because the music has changed. And the trail of blood leads here. Okay, there's somebody chewing something. Lady without clothes. <laughs> Lady without clothes, that never happens in The Witcher. I mean, that's like first time happens I see quite anything often. like that. <laughs> Why'd you kill these people? Clearly it wasn't for their blood. I love mm -hmm. this dialogue. I mean, she didn't have a shower since some time, I think. No. no. We don't have to fight. She's not done eating, I think. Shower after eating. <laughs> shower after eating, okay. <laughs> so we can see that this is not a casual opponent, I would say. Yeah. And she locked the door, so I we're in trouble. Let you leave. Ooh. And it turns out that she's way older than yeah. she looked like. It's just this modern makeup man. It can cheat you. <laughs> yeah. Broxa, Broxa has been one of the opponents that we've been working specifically on uh, for the second expansion okay. to make sure that we uh, get her right. Like the beat up that Pavo is now experiencing is the effect of that work. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> We can we actually start shit. swirling, which is a good way to to stop her. You can yeah. also trap her, and uh, she will be. Okay, there she is. Yes, there's multiple ways. Actually, there are also um, uh, bombs with a silver powder uh, that can that are working on her uh, hair pretty well. <laughs> Okay, eventually, okay. eventually Pavel will get there, like... <laughs> but yeah, she's not a very easy opponent, but he's doing pretty serious damage to her. He's a witcher after all. So I think that sooner or later... At least I'm just spinning to win here. You are exactly like, just spin to win. And I'm eating the dumplings, of course. <laughs> exactly, because just I'm... just take the power of dumplings and there make it lead go. you. <laughs> okay. And she's gone. She and she's gone, and it turns out that that has been the Broxa. And uh, yes, we got an entry in mm -hmm. our estuary. 
What's also interesting is uh, this quest, so when we see her for the first time and the way uh, when she dies, there is this, her kind of crawling. It's oh, a yeah. homage to uh, one of the trailers we had before we even had this expansion, oh, yes. yeah, which yeah. ties it all together very nicely. Yeah. So if you want to check it out, it's called The Night to Remember. So I recommend that one. Yeah, there are also more things in this expansion that tie up right mm -hmm. nicely to this trailer. So. Exactly. Uh, so we'll look at the body. Uh, stinks. Yeah. So this is one of the like one typical moment. elements, I would say, of, of the game, which is the moment when Geralt investigates. Yeah. And uh, I remember like as a player when I've been playing uh, which one, and mm -hmm. there's this moment when Shani investigates this guy's skull. Yeah. Uh, and I really loved that scene. Um, so we, we wanted this scene that we're looking here to be sort of close to it, because they, it, it, like sort of, I don't know, investigating dead body is felt very cool <laughs> <laughs> so it is. Yeah, we wanted to go with this um so as you can see so as you can see yeah we can check different like elements of yeah. the body and and find out what happened so we're gonna start with uh we'll start from the top we'll start with the head <laughs> okay let's start from the top <laughs> yeah some time it's swollen and something took a few bites out of it i like how he's saying everything yeah hmm. something in the throat there's this dialogue in the game. Bulging with coins. When he is asked why he always talks to himself when he's investigating, he says it helps him to think. Exactly. Yeah. So it turned out there was a really interesting clue, actually. The dead person had a purse with a Florence inside mm -hmm. his mouth uh, stuck in. Now the chest. Body was chopped up after death. Blows struck with great force. But bones sliced through, not crushed. Creature that killed him had long claws, sharp as a witcher's blade. First sank its claws into the victim's heart. So as you can see, Geralt is giving a lot of like mm -hmm. uh, vital elements in this investigation. And we are showing through all those lines how good he is, yeah. how, how well he act recognized, you know, the structure of the body, how it's uh, how it's composed, you know, like how to make certain types of cuts mm -hmm. so, so that he can explain it. And uh, we can also see that he's a specialist in his craft. Yeah. Um, and that kind of investigations are like a typical element of a noir stories of uh, detective stories, exactly. you know, things that, that Raymond Chandler um, in his books was writing. And uh, this is something they really love in design, in quest design, in, 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 uh, in story, in, um, to make sure that this atmosphere is very visible, very thick, mm -hmm. you know, that the player can really feel immersed and then this, that the story is very intriguing, you know, it just, because the thing is, we get a lot of, a lot of answers here, mm -hmm. but the thing is, we get even more questions yes. because of that. And that's the, that's the beauty of it because player gets drawn into the story yeah. because and of that. And this is like the beginning of, uh, of the whole like main story. So we're oh, kind yeah. of I getting mean, a lot of background information <laughs> yes. and we're kind of building. But uh, the interesting thing is that we saw the Bruxa holding the hand and then she kind of put it away. So now we will examine actually that hand and learn yeah, what it's exactly. about. What which happened? is quite an important um, body part. <laughs> exactly. Third hand, a spare, except it's clearly not the victims. The guardsmen must have not noticed it as they picked everything up. How's this possible? Still warm, blood still flowing. Several monster species can regenerate. Never heard of that happening to their severed limbs though. Or of their limbs seeming completely alive after so much time. Yeah. I'll examine the tissue more closely later. Might learn something. So you can see, like, the atmosphere is very thick here, and, and we want to make sure that player is, like, as he's finding out more things, he's even getting even more interested because they're yeah. like, the, the story gets even like more like weird and more complex. And it's just, you know, there's just again, question, question. Uh, when you picked up this, it was very important for us to make sure that this th this moment when Geralt says it's a third hand, yeah. like it makes no sense. Like normally yeah. people do not live with three hands. With three mean, hands, exactly. Uh, last time Not even checked. in this world. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly, and, and then Geralt commands on that and uh, he, he he gets this conclusion. Okay, maybe guards who picked up the pieces of the body um, by the riverbank threw it because, in. Yeah. Be, yeah, yeah, because they were just collecting everything that was there. Uh, so yeah, it's just like another twist uh, in in our small investigation. Exactly. So, murderer was clearly a monster, but not a Bruxa. But then why did the Bruxa come here for the severed hand? Who does the hand belong to? Why the hell's it still warm? Now, how it shoved down the victim's throat. What 
What's the significance? And why was he chopped up into pieces? Lots of questions. No answers so far. Mm -hmm. Need to know about the other victims. I'll ask Palmer in to get me in to see the Duchess. So yeah, uh, without spoiling more of the story, we will not continue from here. But of course, um, on October 15th, you will be able to play the game and see it yourself and actually play this expansion. Of course, uh, I recommend going with the main story and then doing the first and the second expansion. Oh, yes, exactly. Although I have this uh, little guilty pleasure still where I, from time to time, just turn on um, the, the Witcher 3 on my PC and I just go straight to Tucson and I just <laughs> I just like to, you know, horseback riding and, and then meeting some of the characters is, is, is unbelievable. Yeah, I do that on Skellige. Yeah? I do that on Skellige. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just love the moments when it starts to rain. Mm -hmm. And then music changes, and oh, I'm on yeah. my horse, and I'm just driving, and it's moving the trees. Uh, there's only music, and me on my horse, and nothing oh, else. That's so good. <laughs> it feels so that's great. it uh, for this video. Thank you, Pavel, for joining us in the studio. Thank for you. those of you that are going to Gamescom, you will actually be able to play the game at the Nintendo booth. So starting Tuesday, August 20th, that's tomorrow, uh, through Saturday, August 24th in Cologne, Germany. Uh, Hole 9 is where um, in the entertainment area and the Gamescom you'll be able to play. The, on the Nintendo booth, of course, play the yeah. game. Definitely go there because yes, it really it. feels cool when you hold it in your hands and you play it yeah so just go there and check yeah i mean it's it's awesome because we can just take it out now and we can proceed with the quests you know once we're done on the toilet yeah on the <laughs> toilet too <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right thank you everyone thank you pavo and yeah. thank you take care bye take care, guys